Hello and welcome to vlog number 89. This week, at the request of YouTube user Thunderbolt Corporation, I'm going to talk about transcranial direct current stimulation for the treatment of Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease is one of the most common, incurable, progressive neurological conditions characterised by motor symptoms of tremor, balance and gait problems, muscular stiffness and rigidity, and slowness of movement, bradykinesia, as well as non-motor symptoms such as depression, memory problems, personality changes and cognitive impairment. The standard treatment for PD revolves around dopamine replacement with levodopa or dopamine agonists, but this becomes less effective over time as the disease progresses. Surgical interventions such as deep brain stimulation DBS, have been proven to be effective particularly for motor symptoms but are only considered suitable for a small number, around 10% of Parkinson's patients and there are associated risks with this surgery as well as recognised neuropsychiatric side effects. Studies carried out into non-invasive brain stimulation techniques such as repetitive transcranial magnetic stimulation RTMS, showed promise for PD patients, with analysis concluding that it had a modest therapeutic effect on motor performance without posing any risks to the patient. Transcranial direct current stimulation TDCS, is another form of non-invasive brain stimulation whereby a direct current is applied via electrodes, typically one anode and one cathode, that are placed on the scalp. Penetration is limited to cortical regions in the brain rather than the deep structures targeted by DBS, but it is thought that stimulation of the motor cortex could benefit Parkinson's patients. TDCS has some advantages over RTMS in that it is less expensive, easier to administer, may lead to longer lasting effects and provides a reliable sham stimulation condition, the equivalent of a pharmaceutical placebo, which enables the design of controlled studies. Several studies have been carried out on the effects of TDCS on motor function and cortical excitability in PD. TDCS stimulates the cerebral cortex through the application of a weak DC current, 1 to 2 milliamps, and these studies have shown that this technique can regulate cortical excitability in the human motor and visual cortex. Also, recent research has shown that TDCS can enhance some aspects of cognition and assist in the recovery of motor deficits in stroke patients. Recent studies on animal models of PD have shown strong evidence for the potential of TDCS to modulate dopaminergic pathways. TDCS in rat and mouse models of PD was found to increase the release of dopamine, resulting in raised striatal dopamine levels which were sustained, in some cases, for over six hours following stimulation. Frontal anodal TDCS in a monkey model of advanced PD was shown to activate dopaminergic neurons in the substantia nigra. Fregni et al. evaluated the effects of TDCS on motor function in PD patients in a double-blind, sham stimulation controlled study. They found that anodal stimulation of the primary motor cortex resulted in a significant improvement of motor function and reaction times an average improvement of almost 22% on the Unified Parkinson's Disease Rating Scale compared to minus 1.6% for sham stimulation. Another study by Baggio et al. found that anodal TDCS of the left dorsolateral prefrontal cortex showed a beneficial effect on working memory. The details of this study are fairly complex and the results show far more detail than my brief summary allows, so Google it if you want the full story. The Michael J. Fox Foundation funded a 2013 project to identify optimal stimulation parameters for the application of TDCS to improve motor and cortical function in PD. The outcome of the studies involved in this project was that the findings demonstrate that TDCS shows promise in improving motor performance in PD, as relatively large performance improvements could be made with a single TDCS application of just 20 minutes. Furthermore, it is likely that long-term stimulation could lead to significantly larger improvements than those attained following a single session. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or have a topic that you'd like me to cover in future vlogs, just leave me a message in the comments and I'll do my best to respond. Have a great week. See you next Friday.